Hi everyone and welcome. My name is Rainer and welcome to my channel which is called Rainier Books. Today I give you a wrap-up of week number 43 of 2020. Um, in this you will see a couple of shots that I did uh, over the week when I went to several places in Stockholm. On Friday I went together with my colleagues to the Museum of Ethnography here in Stockholm and then I will talk about my reading week for you exclusively here on Radio Books. Let's get started. Hello, it's Monday and the postman always rings twice. No, he hasn't rung at all, but he has left this little wonderful package in my mailbox. And is this what I think it is? This came by Royal Mail in the United from the United Kingdom, and uh, it is what it is. It is what I thought it was. Oh my God, Richard Fort, a piece of my heart, ladies and gentlemen. Now, finally, after all the wait, because I wanted to start this project in September. Remember. I wanted to read all the novels, all the books that Richard Ford has written. And now I have a first novel here, A Piece of My Heart. I could cry. No, I don't cry, but I'm pretty happy about this. I can finally start my reading project. Wow. Okay, Blackwell's is, Blackwell's is a um, university academic book retailer. And they have several shops in the UK. And I think this parcel is probably coming from the head office in Oxford in England. Two books are inside and I wonder what I get here. Oh my God. Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. And the second book is... Ba -ba -ba -ba. Twilight of Democracy, The Seductive Lure of Authoritarianism by Anne Applebaum. And Blackwell's also sent me this amazing little bookmark here, you see. B.H. Blackwell. What? Limited, yes. 50, 50, 51 East Broad Street in Oxford. Beautiful. It's Friday morning, my friends, and I'm on my way to an excursion. An excursion to the Ethnographic Museum here in Stockholm. I take the subway to a station called the Edit, and from there I walk the rest, which is about 1.4 kilometers. See you later. Well, I just arrived here at Yadet, which is uh, a larger green area, almost right in the middle of Stockholm, on the island of Jurgården. And I'm going to the Ethnographic Museum. So behind me, you see the map uh, of the area, which is really beautiful. They have a tower, which is called the Cockneys Tornet. Not very spectacular, but uh, people love it here. And uh, it's about 30 floors high. And I think it's the highest building maybe in the city still. That will change in the next coming years. But now I'm going over at it to the museum and I show you something of the landscape. This morning it doesn't look very welcoming here. It's grayish, it's uh, October, it's slippery on the ground here. I have to be careful. You see here this area of Yardet, which is um, over there. I think you can see the gray buildings of the Swedish radio, Swedish television. Um, and. Uh, this area here is very green, very beautiful. In the summer, even the princess of Sweden, Madeleine, she has, uh, she was riding her horse here years ago when she still was an unmarried, beautiful princess. She's still beautiful, but now she's married. She lives in the United States. And in the background, there is the Cockney's Tornet. You can see that small, thin stick up there. And I'm going, I'm heading in that direction now. Autumn. Autumn here in Stockholm. Look at this beautiful trees. Hi everyone, I'm standing outside the Ethnographic Museum, the Museum of Ethnography here in Stockholm, and I walked all the way from Yadet to this place to show you where we're heading. Everywhere. 
The exhibition we're watching is actually called Human Nature and it has opened three weeks ago and it will be shown here at the Museum of Ethnography in Stockholm until January in 2022. So maybe if you are able to travel again next year, come to Stockholm and see this beautiful exhibition about human and nature and how we treat nature. I'm going here over a beautiful bridge. Beautiful bridge. Just outside the uh, museum. I'm here at the East Schellerum, the Ice House. The Ice House of Rusendal Palace. That looks reminiscent of the uh, Doric Temple from ancient Greece. Here in the middle of Stockholm. You don't believe it, don't you? And we're walking on the royal island of Jurgården. So we're on our way back with the tram now. We decided to take the tram because it's really chilly, cold outside. And uh, it takes about five minutes. Well, this week, today is Sunday, the um, 25th of October. And uh, if you heard the news, um, well, good news are hard to find. It's uh, difficult because today Spain has uh, announced uh, the state of emergency in the whole country because of the rising numbers of coronavirus infections. State of emergency in Spain, which is supposed to last until May 9, 2021. In Italy, the numbers are rising. In Germany, uh, in the UK um, still, and the um, women's soccer national team, which is not so important, but... Uh, it touches me because I'm I'm a, I'm a women's soccer guy. You know, the women's soccer national team of England has cancelled Tuesday's match against Germany in Wiesbaden in Germany, due to uh, that someone of the leaders of the lead, in the leading team has been infected with a virus. Salt. Well, wear a mask when you go outside. Keep the distance. Wash your hands. That's what you have to do over the next months, and I think over the next five six months probably until we come into a little warmer period into the next year until we have some vaccines but until then we have to be extremely careful everybody everybody we have to be careful and then we can manage it because the virus needs us the virus needs me and the virus needs you and needs us to meet and to get too close to each other uh, without precautions and to transfer itself from me to you or from you to me or to any other person. So we are the ones who are able to stop this. Not completely, but we can mitigate it and we can get into, until we get into a, bit, a better situation next year. But until then, it's gonna be pretty hard, I'm sure. But now let's get to the reading. I told you uh, in recent weeks that my, I told you in recent weeks that my reading wasn't so satisfying for me and was not so successful. If, if there's anything to connect to success in, in reading, a quantity of books. I finished two books this week and I'm very happy about it. So the first book that I uh, want to talk about, uh, that I want to talk about here, the only book that I really want to talk about here that I finished is Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. I finished that today actually. Um, and this is a wonderful novel. It is um, a novel uh, a lot about Idaho, about the state of Idaho where Emily Ruskovich is born and raised. But it's also a novel about memory, a novel about a horrible crime that happened. And it's a novel that spans over five decades, I think from 1973 to 2025. Yeah, a little bit into the future, that's right. Uh, and this is about Anne and Wade. We meet Anne and Wade in the beginning. They live somewhere uh, at the foot of a mountain in Idaho. And we learn that Anne is the second wife for Wade. Wade has started suffering from dementia. Uh, he is only 50 plus years old, but he has early dementia as his father had, as his grandfather had, as his great-grandfather had. It goes in the family. And he is uh, 
seemingly a nice guy, but then he has some sort of um, situations that Anne suffers from where uh, he gets violent and, and doesn't really know what to do because she thinks that Wade is not, it's not Wade's fault, that he, he reacts violently to some things that Anne does and then he might grab Anne's head, might push her somewhere. And, but she always says, no, it's, it's, uh, it's his illness. So uh, she's very understanding about Wade's uh, illness and he, she loves him extremely much. Uh, the first wife, we learn slowly from uh, the first wife that Wade had was called Jenny. Yeah, it's May and June. Um, Jenny has killed her six-year-old daughter, May, many years ago. And she sits in prison now. And the other daughter, June, has disappeared. And nobody has seen her since the day uh, the murder of May has happened. So Jenny's in prison. Um... We learn very early in the novel, because I don't want to give any spoilers here, but we learn pretty early in the novel, so I, I'm going to tell you this, that one of the girls, and that is uh, June, has been uh, visiting uh, Anne in school. Anne works as a choir teacher in school, and June uh, has, uh, I think she's not eight, nine years old, she has a strange attraction to older boys. So uh, she steals a knife from her father, from her father. Her father is carving knives, that's one of his hobbies, and she wants to give this knife to a boy that she adores. Um, but then she has to meet Anne in school. So June meets Anne, and uh, Anne takes away the knife, puts it uh, in, in a locker somewhere. And then Wade appears before everything happens, before the bad things happen. Wade appears in school and he gets the knife from Anne. And they talk about having piano, uh, about an interest in playing the piano and stuff like that. And nothing really happens. But then after the murder and after Jenny is sentenced to life in prison, suddenly Wade appears in school and he asks Anne to teach him play the piano. And that's how they meet and that's how they get married. And, well, the story is really tough. It jumps from decade to decade, forth and back all the time and it shows that memory it's a story about memory it's a story about grief it's a story about love i would say that uh, some people have declared uh, as a mystery story and i think that uh, idaho by uh, emily ruskovich was at least nominated for one uh, mystery award award is, is it a mystery i wouldn't say so because the mystery doesn't get solved and many people on uh, goodreads for example are really disappointed by the fact that we don't know what really happened when they were traveling with that truck. May and June and Jenny and Wade. Did Jenny really kill her daughter or did something else happen? Why was Wade so violent? And how was the relationship between the two sisters? The relationship between the two sisters is not so flawless. And we, we have several uh, chapters in the book where uh, um, Emily Ruskovich is looking at the relationship of these two uh, siblings. It's very, very interesting. And uh, we also see um, a beautiful friendship between uh, Jenny and a woman named Elizabeth in prison. And Elizabeth is actually uh, trying to um, get Jenny out on parole after many, many years in prison. But I won't tell you more. You have to read it. It's beautifully composed, very... Uh, and, and, and what I like about this novel and that's also maybe one of the reasons why I picked it up, because Idaho is a very interesting um, scenery to, um, to have a novel being played out there. Why I, one of the reasons why I picked this novel up was uh, the question of nature and the beautiful landscape of this state of Idaho. And nature plays a very important role. It's the mountains, the animals, and the forests, and the winter, the forces of weather that we always encounter in this novel as well. So nature is always there in the background as a huge and as a large threat. This novel won the Dublin Literary Award in 2019. Last year it did that and uh, it's really worth all your reading. I have to check on interviews with Emily Ruskovich if she has said anything about the novel because otherwise I think many of that, of the, the, the central mystery of what happened actually on the day that uh, May was killed, a six-year-old girl, um, is a mystery. And you could have different kinds of theories. I had at least two other theories that would 
uh, maybe free Jenny as uh, the mother here in this uh, novel. Well, it's like a good song. It's open to interpretation. Idaho by Emily Ruskovich. Read it. It's worthwhile reading it. I think it, this must be one of the better books of the recent, of the last, this is one of the better books of the last five, six years, probably. Beautiful. I'm not going to discuss the next book in depth because I did a buddy read with Paula uh, from Draw Your Book. This is uh, Vanessa Vaselka, The Great Offshore Grounds. Uh, it took me longer to read this than expected, almost two weeks today. I finished this one too. Um, this is uh, a remarkable novel and everything that needs to be said, we will say that in a few days. So stay tuned both to Paula's and to my channel. The Great uh, Offshore Grounds was nominated, was on the long list of the National Book Award in the United States by Vanessa Vasalka. One detail I can tell you is Vanessa Vasalka lives in Portland, Oregon which uh, is my favorite town in the United States. Um, often. I had to change my uh, TBR a little bit. I expected that, that something had to be changed in the TBR, <coughs> excuse me, concerning my reads until the end of the year, because the library, I had made res reservations in the library, and some of the books that I had not on the list, the 15 books I want to read until the end of the year, if you remember this beautiful video, um, some of the books that are not on the list appeared in the library now and asked me to pick them up. Pick me up, pick me up. And so I picked them up and I have to read them because they are reserved by other people who want to read them as quickly as possible. And two of them are here and I have to read them as quick as possible. The first one, I think I will try to read them in a parallel way because one is nonfiction, one is fiction. The fiction book is Sisters by Daisy Johnson. It's a pretty short book. Uh, about two sisters in the UK, another sister story, actually. We had sisters in Idaho, remember, May and June. We had sisters in the great, the giant offshore grounds. We have sisters, Livy and Cheyenne. And here we have uh, another pair of sisters. I think their names are May and June. No, July and September, interesting, because there's another parallel to Idaho, because in Idaho, we have two girls by the name May and June. Here we have two girls by the name July and September. That's interesting. Oh my God, I know, fell down. But anyway, I'm going to read Daisy Johnson. She's a very young, a very promising British author, which I had expected to be on the booker list, the long list at least. She didn't make the long list, but this book is very interesting. Sisters, about a relationship of two younger sisters who move with their mother to the coast in England and the beautiful friendship and loving relationship uh, between the sisters gets disturbed by some things that I don't know anything about because I haven't read the book yet. Sisters by Daisy Johnson. The next book is coming around the corner are the great American elections, of course. The um, presidential elections are nine days away from now and uh, that is uh, probably the elections and other stuff that the presidency, the current presidency of Donald J. Trump is the topic of the book that I also got from the library. This is Rage by Bob Woodward that I got and I have two weeks to read it. And, uh, oh my God. Um, I will try to give it a, a quick read. I can read these kind of books kind of quickly and uh, hopefully uh, finish it this week. Rage by Bob Woodward about... Uh, the Trump presidency from 2016 onwards and based on, I think, 17 interviews that uh, Trump did, so Trump gave to, to Bob Woodward, where he, among other things, said uh, that the coronavirus is very, very dangerous. He said that in January. He, already, he learned that very, very early, actually, by all his uh, counselors and um, advisors and, yeah, his aides, whatever. So these are the books that I am dealing with uh, over the course of the coming week. And I hopefully finish Rage by Bob Woodward and I hopefully finish um, Sisters by Daisy Johnson. That would be the plan. And then I continue cling to my list that I published a couple of weeks ago, but there might be some surprises. Um, that was everything I had to say today. It's week 43 that goes, we go into week 44. Um, and uh, I will live a very decent life in my 
beautiful little apartment here in uh, Sweden, in Stockholm. Uh, I will try not to go out as much as possible. I will stick to my room, stick to my home office, stick to reading, stick to watching things. I have just started watching uh, Unsolved Mysteries um, on Netflix. I saw both um, seasons already and now I'm going back in time. All Americans know what I'm talking about. I'm watching Robert Stack's uh, series Unsolved Mysteries. It's incredible how many stories there are. Um, I also listen to uh, music and that's what actually want, that's something that that's actually something that I wanted to start each and every week. I want to advise you about one music, one piece of music, one CD, one publication, one release of 2020 that I would recommend to you. And today I would recommend to you the Canadian... Wait a minute. Today I would recommend to you the Canadian band Wolf Parade. They are from Montreal and they have a new album out that is called Thin Mind. I think it's, it was released uh, a couple of months ago and uh, it's really um, very interesting and beautiful music from this band. Yeah, and I think I am not allowed to play more. Thin Mind. I've seen them live actually many, many years ago and I'm longing for live concerts. My God, I saw them live ago. Yes, that's a story that I have to tell you. I, you know, I'm I'm not a pretty shy and and quiet guy, actually. But uh, in this live concert, I was with a couple of friends, and Wolf Parade was playing there. It was at uh, a place that is closed now; that doesn't exist anymore here in Stockholm. And they had played the concert. They had, I think, they had played the first or and second encore. And then um, the singer of the band asked uh, the audience, "What should we play now? What should we play now?" And Suddenly I hear myself screaming, shine a light! And the lead singer says, okay, shine a light! Wolf Parade is a band that you should listen to if you like indie rock. It's really a great band from Montreal, Canada. And with that, I thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you had a great week. I hope you have a great week next week. Be careful and stay safe because that's what we all need to do over the course of the next month. I will say that each and every week until we are in a little um, more safe water to speak with Vanessa Vasalkas, the great offshore shore grounds. Thank you very much um, for watching this. Subscribe to the channel if you don't do it already because that helps me a lot to produce even more and beautiful content and maybe even more videos for you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.